Hello, everyone, and welcome to the ninth Under Armour Jordan Speeds Championship. I'm this year's tournament director, Thomas Harrison. Um, the AJJ is really excited to be back here at Training Forest for the fifth time. And I just want to take a second to recognize the Training Forest staff. Um, just say a quick thank you to Richie Hare and Robert Bruns. And everyone here at Training Forest. And thank you to everyone for coming out to our Q&A today with our tournament host, Jordan Speed. I think it's safe to say Jordan needs no introduction, but here's a little bit about his junior golf days. Uh, Jordan has five AJJ wins, which included three invitationals, two of which are still on the AJJ schedule today. Jordan was a three-time first-team Rolex Junior All-American and earned Rolex Junior Player of the Year honors in 2009 before attending the University of Texas at Austin, where he helped the Longhorns win the 2012 National Championship. He also won the U.S. Junior Amateur twice and completed, competed in the Cannon Cup, now the Wyndham Cup for the West team. On the PGA Tour, Jordan has won 13 titles, including most recently the RBC Heritage in April. So I want everyone to give a big round of applause for our tournament host, Jordan Speed. Um, well, Jordan, welcome again, and thank you so much for being here again. Um, greatly appreciate it. I know the juniors are always looking forward to this. Uh, appreciate you taking the time. It's not like you've been busy the last couple of weeks or anything. So uh, welcome, but we will get right into it with a few questions for you. So, Jordan, what was one thing you did to set your, yourself apart in junior golf? Well, I think, um, so I grew up, you know, not too far from here, just in North Dallas, and Farmer's Branch is where I played some junior golf, and there, as I'm sure a lot of y'all have, um, where you live right now, we had a lot of juniors at, at the course I grew up at, so I just made friends there, and I just tried to get really, I'm, I'm a very competitive person, and we just tried to play all the time. Um, I think I, I learned how to play golf versus learn how to hit golf balls um, early on. And I think that that was massively beneficial, learning how to score. Um, you know, they, most of the guys I was playing with were a little bit older than me. And uh, so I would go out there and, you know, try and get to their level and then pass them and so on and so forth. And I think I was lucky to have that kind of competition day to day. And then I got introduced to the AGGA and started with the Junior All-Stars back then, which was, I think, what was it, 12 to 15 year old age group? And, um, and then moved on to regular events from there, and eventually the invitationals, and, um, and that's obviously where the most exposure comes for colleges and such. But to answer your question about what did I do, I mean, I, I really think it was just learning how to play and score. Um, I would go to the range when I went through swing changes early on when I was like 13 years old and switched to the coach I have now. Um, and other, after that, you know, I think I spent six months mainly on the range, and then once that kind of got to a place where I could get to playing, I was back to just playing as, as, as often as possible. And there's just no substitute for it, right? I mean, you go to the range and obviously every tee shot you hit is similar to a range on a flat lie, um, including par threes, but there's not one other shot that's like a range um, shot. So I, it just as beneficial as it can be at times, I think that when I'm at my best, I'm playing a lot of golf. Um, all right, Jordan, we actually had a hole in one out there on the course today. Sure. But Five under on the par threes today. We out. We out here. You stand up for us. Doctor's appointment. Doctor's appointment. That's on. Awesome. Take a rest. Rest on the week. He's missing out on this. He's gonna be in for a rude awakening when he watches these. He's getting drug tested. <laughs> uh, but Jordan, can you tell us about your first hole in one and the story behind that? Uh, my first hole in one, I was 16. Um, I was playing a practice round for the US Amateur. The US Amateur was at Southern Hills, and it was actually the other course, the US Am, you know, they play multiple courses for all to play. And I hit a four iron, I don't remember exactly how far it was. I did, it didn't see it go in. It was blind, I walked up. I did multiple shots, it was the first shot I hit, and then I, you know, practiced maybe another shot to another pin, and I walked up and, and it was in. So I counted it, obviously. It was my first shot on the par three, and I was just going in the pin, so. Um, but it kind of went over, I didn't see it go in, and then some time passed between that and my next one, and then I had a few in bunches here and there, and that's kind of how, that's kind of how it works, I think, is you might have, and I, if I'm not mistaken, um, he who made the whole one today also had one yesterday, is that right? So, yeah. that's, uh, there you go. Um, so sometimes they come in bunches, and whole ones are, you know, whatever. 90% skill, but you still need the 10% luck to actually find the bottom of the cup, but um, certainly fun. They, very helpful in tournament play. They mean a lot more than they do 
those practice rounds of U.S. Amherst. Does your training uh, schedule or preparation for events change based on the time of year, the point in the schedule, uh, like the weeks leading up to a major, or weeks leading up to the FedEx Cup? Yeah, um, pretty much everything changes. Not only um, like training, like gym training, but also the amount of ball count that I'm on, um, kind of where I'm playing, uh, how many tournaments I'm playing leading in. Uh, a lot of things can change, so I typically try and peak around the four majors, that's always been my goal, um, to be, you know, at the best I can be. If I had to have four weeks where I'm, you know, I'm sitting there on the first team going, all right, I feel better than any other week, you want to be the four majors. So in order to do that, um, I normally, maybe a month out, three weeks out, end up with maybe a little heavier load on um, the training side, the gym, and then do a little speed work after that, and then as you get closer to the tournament, it just becomes more maintenance and mobility, just to save energy. Um, you kind of build up a bit and then you just kind of maintain it and that's worked really well for me and I would say similar um, similarly hitting balls putts I mean for, I, I keep the short game really consistent from a few weeks out into the majors I mean it doesn't wear and tear on you that much um, but ball count you know you try and get a lot of mechanical things kind of out of the way um, with a couple weeks ago and then start just hitting shots so I'll go from Block practice is what we like to call it, where I'm hitting, you know, my stock, you know, I'll hit three phase, three draws of a club, um, or sit there and hit, you know, 15, seven irons of one ball flight while I'm working on something uh, mechanical. And as I get closer to the, the majors, um, I'll, I'll start with my coach and we'll be doing more, um, more kind of real playing practice sessions. So I'll be, you know, having a lot of monitor device down, trying to hit, you know, um, six different trajectories, uh, or three trajectories on a draw, three trajectories on a fade, and then go on some all-speed distance type shots too, especially on the ledges. So, you know, you just, as you all know, it's it's not super common to have just a perfect number out there. And um, so really feeling like I've hit those shots on the range ahead of time where I gotta take eight, nine yards off of a seven iron and just kind of punch draw all in there. Um, it's really beneficial to hit that shot that I don't get when I'm just doing walk practice. So. Um, Hopefully that explains it all, but try and heavy load and block practice early and then start to really get real specific and dialed into the shots you're going to need in the tournament as we get closer. So kind of with that, how much time would you say you spend a week practicing, maybe tournament week versus non-tournament week? Well, that's obviously, that's obviously changed a lot from junior golf given school. Um, now it's actually about, I mean, I could be out there all day, but then, um, you know, you start to notice after four weeks in a row on the road, if you're out there all day, you don't have much energy left for the last week. Um, I didn't have that until I had to learn that as a professional because of college golf, you know, even though we were playing quite a bit, we still probably only, I probably only played 10 or 15 events in a season, you know, now that whatever it is, 25 or 30 weeks a year that you're playing. Um, so finding that balance um, is key. I would say that, you know, in a lead up to, the Open Championship, you know, before I went over to, I played the Scottish Open prior, so you're obviously, you're out there all day playing. Um, I like to play in the majors. Um, let's say the week before, you know, I would I would be at the, I would be on the range at around 7, 7.15 because it's so hot here, and I would be done by 12 or 12.30 unless I was playing. And normally for me, it takes me about three to four hours if I'm just practicing to get through everything that I want to get through. Um, my warm-ups before a round are, you know, an hour that includes 35 minutes on the range, you know, 15 minutes of putting and some chipping, but an actual practice session here at home, um, it takes me somewhere in like the three and a half to four hour range to hit, to hit all of my checkpoints that I try to go through. And now, playing will obviously make that a lot longer day. Who would you say you looked up to in the junior golf days, and are there any parts of your game that you see that kind of modeled um, from watching those guys? That were, that were also a junior or just there were professionals at the time or just anyone? Could have been juniors, professionals, anybody that you kind of looked Yeah, I mean, I, Adam Scott was my favorite player growing up. I just thought it was so smooth, the way he swung the club, um, the way he carried himself, just, he was my favorite player. I mean, obviously I was influenced as everyone in mine and our generation. I'm gonna throw myself into it. I'm gonna throw myself at it. All of us in the same generation here by Tiger, obviously his dominance and you know what he did for the game of golf, which is unmatched. Um, 
but it, to spit to, to not be cliche and pick a different player. Adam was kind of my favorite player. I wanted to emulate just kind of how smooth he swung the club, and um, you know, he was winning a lot of golf tournaments at the time when I was a junior. And um, you know, I'm trying to think who else would have. So Jeff Ogilvie was one of my favorite players, um, and he had won you know the U.S. Open kind of right when I was you know starting to practice and play every day. And, um, so those are a couple of guys that. That I looked up to. Um, I didn't know him, but uh, you know, it's kind of fun, man, when you, you look up to a dude and then all of a sudden you find yourself in a Thursday Friday pairing with him. And uh, you don't want to tell him that they were your favorite player, right? But uh, you just want to beat him at that point. But it's pretty cool. Very cool. So you won a lot of trophies in the junior golf days. Are there any that you still have? And if so, do they have a spot on those 13 tour trophies? Yeah, yeah. I, um, yeah, the Ping Invitational with the cowboy hat, um, that was also a, a super cool trophy. The U.S. Junior, um, that one being probably the most recognizable of junior golf tournaments. Um, but yeah, I I think I've held on to just about every single one um, somewhere. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of them. I've got an office area that has you know trophies professionally and, and the junior ones, so a lot of them are in there. Um, but. Uh, those are probably the two that I, I recognize if I walk into the room now. So Jordan, you've competed in many team events over the years, uh, with the Wyndham Cup, the Cannon Cup, the Ryder Cup, and the President's Cup. Uh, what makes those events special, and why was it always a goal of yours to make those teams? Well, I, I mean, it's just, it's different, right? It's a change of pace. And it's the same game, it's the same people, but I love team sports. And to feel like you're a part of the team, um, and those events representing whether it was your half of the United States or your country, uh, you know, Walker Cup, um, obviously the Cannon Cup, but then uh, the Junior Ryder Cup, the Walker Cup, and then eventually the President's Ryder Cup. It's more, um, it's exciting because you can show more of your personality and get fired up on the golf course that would be kind of awkward if you did that week to week every single round. Um, but it's really the off the course that makes those weeks because you just build closer relationships with whether it was the juniors you were with, you're all staying in the same hotel. And I mean, I remember, I remember staying with like Emiliano Grillo and Justin Thomas in a hotel room and we would like, we'd go out in the hallway and it'd be 80 yards to the end of the hallway and we'd have a little glass that we took from the hotel room set up to see if we could make the putt, you know, across, stuff like that that, you know, we weren't doing on a given week that those events, you know, allowed you to do. And, um, and you know now the relationships we build, you know, everyone professionally end up, you know, kind of in your own lives. And a lot of the younger guys, you know, you're still traveling and staying together and stuff. But um, you start to those weeks are the ones where everybody gets to hang out with each other and gets to know each other. Our stories are told, um, you know, jokes are had, and um, and then when you can be on the winning teams of those events, it's uh, that's certainly really special. We all just want to say on behalf of the AJJ, congrats on becoming a father since the last time we saw you. Uh, first, how has that changed your golf game, uh, if any? And then secondly, can you picture yourself being a junior golf parent here in the future? <laughs> I actually have, I think, uh, I, I got from the AJGA his name and uh, whatever, maybe graduating year would be, it's like, I don't know, what, what years are around? 2040, I think, would be his graduating year. Um, which is kind of funny. Um, I don't. I haven't noticed. In, I, I don't change in my golf game. Um, I don't I haven't noticed anything. I, I'm, a lot of people speak to crazy perspective and how to be a kid. And for me, it's like I. I, I don't think I needed any, any extra inspiration. Like it's. Um, I don't feel much different at all. It's just super cool. You know, Heritage this year. He was on the 18th green, and um, that was a cool moment to have. That they will always have. Um, it's, but more, it's like you just come off the golf course and. Good day, bad day. He doesn't care. Uh, he doesn't know, and um, it kind of makes it makes you kick back into the perspective a little bit quicker than sometimes we kind of make it out to be. You just answer questions in the media, and you felt like you just you know you just had the worst day and what's happened all the time. And you realize you're playing professional golf, and it's the team holds that didn't go your way, and um, you're able to kick back. Really, I'm able to kick back really quickly with perspective with that. I'm sure that'll never that'll continue to get better and better. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, if he wants to play golf, he wants to play golf. If he doesn't, he doesn't. He'll certainly be around it a lot, and so he'll have to make that decision for himself. I mean, I was never really a 
wished I was, um, my dad I think really wanted me to play baseball over golf, um, but I always had the opportunity to, to play golf whenever I wanted and, and ended up choosing that route, but um, I think just giving him opportunities, trying to get him involved in sports in general, um, and then if golf becomes something he wants to do, then I'd be happy to be standing in the back of the room while he's sitting here playing in an AJJ event, you know? Very cool. Well, before we turn it over to the juniors uh, for a few questions here, I want to do a quick round of rapid-fire questions for you. So we'll start firing them off. But first off, favorite trophy on the shelf? Uh, the <coughs> Masters trophy. Uh, you have a TV show. There is a trophy. It's, we don't get to keep the jacket. There is a trophy. Um, I don't know if you guys knew that. I didn't know that. Um, it's going to show up. Um, but there is, yeah, there is a trophy. It's a little, it's a clubhouse. Does that one get its own shelf, or is it just mixed in there? Well, there's, yeah. Kind of its own spot. I mean, I have I have the major ones in the space. Hopefully, you make room for more. <laughs> There's not room for fire. <laughs> a TV show or a movie guy when you're on long flights? Long flights and movie. Any uh, favorite movie in particular right now? Um, no, I actually I'm one of the few people I think that haven't seen the new Top Gun, so I gotta get out and see it. I, I don't <laughs> So I gotta, I gotta get out and see it. Um, it's a little harder with an eight-month-old. You don't really get the three hours to go to a movie theater, and he's not really interested in the top movie. So, um, so maybe if I'm find myself by myself on the road at some point, I'll, I'll go see it. But that, yeah, that's nice. All right, dream job with golf that worked out. I'd love to be a major league pitcher. I think I think that'd have been really cool. I think the balls in your hand. Favorite mid-round snack? Uh, I nowadays I actually a lot of times eat a peanut butter and banana sandwich. I used to hate them. Um, now that's what I end up having. I think if I had to choose, I'd choose like a Reese's, but a lot of times <laughs> the former makes a little more sense for us to actually um, get the right energy. You're going out there to play with your dream force and who are you playing with? Oh man, that could go all over the place. Um, I put my dad in it. Uh, and then right now, I'd say Steph Curry. Um, who else? Somebody give me, give me who is it? Someone else's. Uh, Living or doesn't matter. Could be anyone. say try to, for me, I had Dylan Fratelli on my team. He's on the PGA Tour now, he's a South African. He was a senior, and so our class schedule was very different. But he was somebody who, if he weren't on our team, I'm not, I'm not sure how quickly I would have been able to uh, be successful or get better in college and then get better um, right afterwards because of his discipline. He was somebody who, um, you know, I went into college looking to get a good education. I thought when I chose Texas, I thought I'd great golf, good education, and social life. I would, I would, it could be fun as well. Um, Dylan was more the first two, and that discipline, the idea that he was really good, a top five player in the country, and was out the course when I wasn't, killed me. I hated it. I hated that he was getting better and I wasn't. I would say look up to those juniors and seniors that have. Been through it, find the, find the like minds, find the guys who, if 
your goal is to get better while you're in college because you want to get to the next level, then you can still go do, you still have the college experience, but make sure you kind of get those priorities set um, early on and find the kind of guys who you see what they're doing and, and try and emulate it. I, I was lucky that our team was, you know, filled with all Americans. And so every day I had good competition, but it was those Saturdays and Sundays where, you know, if it weren't for him, I'm not sure if, if I would have been two or three hours later. And over the course of, you know, over the course of the year, that makes a big difference. <laughs> say one of them would be, I, I, I hit a six iron on the 14th hole of the, the Open Championship. Um, I had a debacle on the 13th hole the year that I won and, and made a bogey. Um, and I lost the lead that I had the whole day. And the cooch had kind of hit one out where he was going to make par on 14. And I hit a six iron. It was 201 to the hole. Pins in this tiny little back section. You can't really miss right or left if you're going to go at it. And there was some wind, just like a little wind, rain off the right, and I just hit this six iron that just just never left the stick, and it almost too hopped in, and it it got me my feet back under me uh, when I was kind of off the rails, and I was able to set a new goal for the rest of the round, and uh, ended up winning the open because of it. Um, it was probably that's the one off the top of my head I think of as far as a shot. Okay. 
your favorite course? My favorite course? My favorite course on the PJ Tour schedule is Riviera. Um, but I mean, it's hard to beat Augusta, uh, especially during the Masters. But um, Riviera is the top, the top couple golf course in the world for me. I've never, I've never, I've never won there. I think I finished third or fourth um, a couple times, but um, that's maybe why I love it so much because I, I can't quite get over it, you know. Um, but it's got some of the best holes we play all year. Uh, when you're putting, or especially like longer putts, are you aware of how far back you want to take your putter um, for like your certain tempos, or how far you need to get in the hole, or is it mostly feel for you? I think it's mostly feel, but it's all based on, I do a lot of speed work on the greens ahead of time, so I guess if, it, if someone measured it, I wouldn't have any idea what to tell you if, it, if I'm on a certain, you know, two to, two to one, or you know, yeah. certainly Bryson measures his, right? So yeah. there, is, there is a measurement, I mean, you can't do it. Um, if you're going to keep the same tempo going through, but I can't, um, versus like a Brent Snedeker, it would be just so totally opposite. Um, there's no right answer. I don't, mine just comes from, I mean, I do a lot of it the last two weeks because the greens are, you know, significantly slower than what y'all are putting on here. Um, and what we see week to week. Uh, so it required a lot of different speed work, but I don't know as, as far as how far I take it back. Sometimes you have to. Um, sometimes you don't need to be on the range anymore. You go out there and I'll play, play the game worst ball, or you hit two shots everywhere. You got to play the worst one, see how low you can score. I wouldn't do a ton of that. I do that like periodically because scoring is when you're out there, even if you're playing on your own and you get to three, four, five under through nine, ten, eleven, twelve holes, that's beneficial. So I'm not. But the worst ball kind of makes you really focus on how can I better that previous shot. Um, but as far as leading up, you know, I'll get normally, um, say if I'm, so if I'm going to play in Memphis in a few weeks, uh, you know, I'll be practicing, you know, quite a bit, but say I only have one week off. The Wednesday before, I'll come see my coach. Uh, we'll work, we'll just work for a couple hours. We'll do checkpoints on putting, checkpoints on swing. I'll probably go practice the next day, come back and see him again, and probably play that day. And then I'll play through the weekend. Um, yeah, kind of figure out exactly what we're working on, go work on it, and then do it on the course and, and perform. Anyone else have any questions for Jordan? Shots that I'm glad that I was practicing here. 
um, when I got over there. Like you said, playing games on the golf course. Like what's your favorite game? I like playing wolf. Um, yeah, wolf hammer. Um, but I mean, we'll do anything. Coin flip. You ever play coin flip? Yeah. What's that? You played it all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just yeah, getting competitive. I mean, trying to find as many pros in the area that are out that off week, um, as many good players that are making birdies around you, you know. And then there's a number of really good scratch players that I couldn't tell you what they do for a living or how they're able to play on a Wednesday at 9 a.m. But they are. And uh, and uh, so I mean, there's there's typically room for. For a game, I just find that I've, I've always found that that's been a, a good way for me to replicate what I want to see the next week. Is and you may only have three or four shots where you feel something that day, but that's more than I would have had if I was out there by myself. I've just found it really hard to practice pressure without having it, you know, come in from somewhere else. And that's where I start to learn. I I feel good about this, but I didn't like this shot under pressure. Let me work on this shot this week. So. That's all in the back of my head. Obviously, when I'm playing the game, I'm just trying to win the game. But um, you know, then I'll look back and say, you know, what do I need to work on a little bit more? What's the most money you've won from this? <laughs> it really depends on who you're playing with. Like you're playing with like Tiger and. No, 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 no. They, he doesn't live in Dallas. Um, no, like like Romo here is like my ATM machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's got plenty of it, so yeah. yeah so it's um, it, it it's um, it's all relative. How many shots do you give him? I give him uh, I give him five holes now in, in our map. We normally have a side. He gets a stroke on the five hardest holes, and we play a per hole birdie double, and you can each press once per nine. So um, that's the, that's the side game from the, the wolf game, but. Um, you know, that kind of keeps us both playing every single hole. Because in a wolf game, if your partner's in birdie and you're, you know, you're, you've got a six or par, you know, you pick it up. But now we both have to finish out and it makes it, makes it a bit better. Who's your favorite pro to practice with? Uh, so I play, the, I, I play more practice rounds with Ryan Palmer than anyone else. Ryan's been a mentor and a really good friend of mine for a lot of years. And um, we actually play a game in our practice rounds on tour where we play like fifty dollar birdies um, when we're playing nine holes, just so that we can go practice the other holes outside of our birdie chance. But if we miss our birdie chance, our caddies get a chance to make it for us. And so it gets Michael and James are good friends. James Ryan's caddy, who's James is scratch. Michael's probably like an eight. Um, so I'm at a little disadvantage there, but Michael's a gamer, so he's actually I think made more plus than James has in those games. Um, and so that's always fun. We kind of you know it just keeps it light, and then but we're practicing the other holes when we're not. Doing a birdie chance. Um, I played a lot with Justin, uh, a lot of practice with Justin, and probably more rounds throughout the year with Justin than anyone else, just in trips we take or, or pairings or whatever it may be. But um, me and Ryan are always texting each other when we're playing the same event about, about getting nine holes in. After a long tournament round, what's your recovery process like? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. That's something I've really tried to. Hone into the last couple of years. Uh, so we all pretty much use a physio, um, like a chiropractor or physio. So I'll get work done after tournament rounds. Uh, normally a flush, um, get your back flushed out, that kind of stuff. And then uh, I'll do some kind of cold therapy, either an ice bath or a cold plunge. And then I got Norma Tech boots, and I'll wear those for 20 minutes before bed. Um, that's not, it's not necessarily every single round, like the first week, if it, you know, if it's on the west coast and the weather's good, I don't normally need the cold, cold therapy or whatever, but as I get into second, third, fourth week in a row, or you get into this part of the season, I'm doing it pretty much after every round. Um, it's stuff that I've read, you know, I read Tom Brady's book, um, and then I've been fortunate through Under Armour to have some relationships with other guys. I've, I've asked Steph Curry, who's probably the most active NBA player off the ball. Um, I mean, I just, I mean, you gotta be, I mean, he's 30, what is he now, 33 or four? 
he's got to be just gassed at the end of these games. So I'm trying to pick his brain, find out what he's doing. And, um, you know, I'm 28. Uh, at this point going forward, you know, you're going to feel a little bit, I'm not going to feel better than I did when I was younger going forward. So I'm just trying to maybe get a little bit ahead of, ahead of the curve. I don't necessarily feel that, you know, I don't feel totally worn out after rounds at all, um, but more so, you know, golf's a sport about longevity and I want to play it for a long time at the highest level that I can. So I'm trying to pick the brains of these guys in these other sports that are more active and figuring out what's working for them. And in, in, in the TV 12 Better book, Tom started when he was about my age is when he started changing up his whole kind of training routine and everything. And he's still one of the best at, and the, at the oldest age that quarterbacks ever played. So um, I feel like that's probably a good way to start. All right, guys, I think we have time for two more questions. Does anyone have anything? Uh, what's the next spring break trip? <laughs> um, we're, uh, Justin's getting married this year, so we'll have a trip ahead of that, but um, I'm not going to disclose the information on said trip. <laughs> um, that'll be up to him if he wants to, <laughs> to go out or anything, but um, yeah, that's about it. Anyone else? One more question?